Greetings! Welcome back to my random channel. This will probably be the last video of this year because I'm going for holiday. But today it's time to decommission another piece of magnificent technology uh, and it's another TV box standard definition this time Humax Duo Vizio PVR 9200T and it's a standard definition box as I said it's got a few old school connectors on the back and yeah a slot for a common interface card it does have record function so we'll have a look what sort of hard drive was inside and what sort of other goodies are in there apart from dust because without a doubt there will be a lot of it inside so come and join nice little label over here warning unplug power cable to install the antenna cable well what happens if you don't if you ask you'll get a tingle because it, it runs off of a switch mode power supply it outputs a power to the antennas for the amplifier and it puts out 5 volts but uh, it is coupled through a capacitor to the mains so it can give you a bit of a tingle on the finger 15 screws it took to take this off so let's see if it will come off oh yes indeed it does and I think I've just broken Humax warranty void if removed sticker well it's all void right now and tada right let's clean this up a little bit and take the boards out and have a look what's on it and what was inside well we've got a few boards and a few components so let's have a quick look this was one on the front board under the flap and it's just a USB board nothing uh, active on here. Here is the beautiful front panel with a VFD display and over here we've got, we've got a super cap. It's a 0.22 farad at 5.5 volts. A few switches, tactile switches and again those are the single pin ones. So two pin, uh, not four pin switches. So easy to desolder if you're in a pinch, easy to take out. Infrared receiver, there's probably some E squared PROM and the battery on the Super Cup is doing battery backup for it. We've got a date code 3806, so 2006. Over 10 years old this equipment. Pumax uh, Vizu X Plus Front Revision 1.1. And we have a little power switch, mains rated, really nice power switch with spade connectors and a cable that's terminated, doesn't want to come off. There we go and I I doubt really that this switch has had much use so it's perfectly good switch and we've got a fan 12 volts Nidec Beta V everything's TUV certified in here and we've got a hard drive it's not a serial ATA this box is far too old for this it's a parallel ATA IDE drive uh, 160 gigs so nothing too fantastic they're not as fast as serial ATA but it can be used for backups and we've got the power supply board and the main board so let's look at the power supply first it's a really nice power supply I think uh, very simple very basic and uh, yeah there isn't much active components on here everything is based around this chip over here which is 7M0680 very minimalistic chip for a power supply and this does all sorts of magic to get the power supply going so very small amount of external components um, as far as power supply uh, switch mode power supplies go this hasn't got much on here we've got Samsung cap 180 microfarad 450 volt uh, which I've discharged already just to avoid getting a tingle again board TUV um, certified um, 2006 but it's already lead free evilness so Oh yeah, when did that start? And we've got common mode choke, a few passives, class X2 capacitors, so X2 capacitors are basically, if they fail, they uh, the capacity just decreases a little bit with every failure, but they will never fail as a short circuit, so they're used whenever the human can come in contact with a component or case like the USB port or something like that just to avoid getting you killed. It's got uh, nicely, very nicely labeled all the outputs. We've got uh, the hard drive bit, uh, plus 12 and plus 5 volts. And then we've got this um, entire board over here with all connectors, ground 12, 6, 6, ground 3.3, 3, 
2 times ground and minus 28 volts and here very nicely someone was very thoughtful they've put the description of the current ratings for each uh, each rail so we can do get 2 amps at, of 3.3 2.4 amps of 6 volts 12 volt 300 milliamps and then 5 volts and 12 volts 0.8 and 0.5 amp for the um, hard drive connector so really really nicely designed power supply on the back as you can see there is a very nice isolation between the um, mains and the low voltage side um, all the way around here and yeah it's at least a centimeter all the way around interestingly that's um, I haven't seen that before it's got the ground connector going almost around the high voltage side uh, but they've done this to incorporate those two spark gaps over here those are just PCB uh, spark gaps and that's for if gross overload appears gross very high potential on the main side like a lightning strike or whatnot this would um, jump the spark gap over here and then we've got another set of small spark gaps for protection though there are across the common mode choke this is very common actually to put spark gaps uh, on the common mode choke and that's about it there's a couple of cutouts actually no like a lie there's only one yeah it's only a five pin package this so again very minimalistic everything is inside that you need for the power supply all you do is attach uh, a few caps a few resistors an opto isolator and a transformer two and a half amp uh, pcb mount fuse if it fails you've got to desolder it and, and solder another one it's not ideal i prefer when they mounted the old school glass fuses uh, in stuff that you can change this in reality those fuses never actually fail always something else uh, fails and it's never short circuit it just stops working but i'm sure this power supply is perfectly reusable if you wanted to reuse it for something it's got a few voltage rails and i'm I'm quite sure this is still working and will be working for another decade so let's have a look at the main board and see what's on here and um, we've got two cans for the high frequency signal input and output for the loop so you can connect another device to it and interestingly one is NXP and one is Philips um, so that's a bit of a coincidental but yeah Philips is now NXP part numbers are very similar so this must have happened uh, before the sorry after the merger already TD 1316 AS and there is another sticker like so right there TDM 1316A those stickers look the same and here is a view inside one of the cans if you were wondering yeah here we've got a chip that seems that not not been fitted in a couple of inductors a few diodes here is an interesting feature so we've got a coil made out of PCB there's a few more inductors here is a capacitor made out of PCB so this little shape over here acts as a capacitor for very high frequency and here is another one there's a few more inductors and it's all filtering and then there's two active components and a crystal and here is the main chip I just moved it and it cracked off uh, the glue completely dried out over here was just held with thermal adhesive and it's a NEC chip NEC Japan D61132 AS1 look at all the trucks tracking and snaking all the way around just to make sure that they arrive into the hard drive interface at the right time at those frequencies um, this stuff operates it's not good enough just to put a piece of wire across the wires have to be the correct length because it would mean the bits arrive at the destination at wrong time there's a lot more of it happening around uh, around the memory chips and the back of the board is pretty plain there's only a whole bunch of the coupling capacitors underneath the BGAs and that's about it and I think that's it so I'll leave you with the picture of the Altera Cyclone FPGA over here probably the most exciting chip in this unit and thank you very much for watching have a fantastic christmas and come back and join me again probably after new years but for this video i think that's it so take care